Hello, and welcome back to Foos Entertainment. Yeah, I know, do different locations every single time that we do this. But, this is actually my scene arrangement. Of this where I sit to actually watch a movie, so we're actually in the theater room. This is my comfortable couch. Well, first let's go ahead and showcase this new box set. And that's this guy right here. The Indiana Jones Adventures in 4K. This is the exclusive steelbook set from uh, Best Buy. This is from Paramount, obviously. So that's a showcase of it. The individual still books I will be showing as I review the movies. And we'll be doing all four of those tonight and right ahead. Hopefully get them all up pretty quickly. So let's talk about the first one. Which would be 1981's, although the release date was 82. This is a 1981 movie. And that would be Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. All right. That arc on the back. Sleeve. Inside, you have visual codes for all four movies. I had no intention of replacing this set, but I'll save that just in case I do. The inside, of course. All right. I want to spend more time talking about the quality of these movies, so I will be um, going quickly through the plot. Taking place in 1936, a professor of archaeology, treasure hunter, and archaeologist, Indiana Jones, is recruited by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. to go ahead and go on a quest to locate and prove it is not myth but instead fact the Ark of the Covenant and stop Nazis from acquiring the Ark of the Covenant, the Lost Ark which is supposed to have supernatural powers that allows the individual who is in possession of the Ark of the Covenant to uh, be unstoppable. So he has to find a way to prevent the Nazis from acquiring the Ark of the Covenant. Joining him, of course, is a um, love interest from Indiana Jones's past by the name of Marion Riverfield. I guess I didn't think that's her last name. But we'll just call her Marion. And eventually, um, the Nazis do open the Ark. And, just like it says in the mythologies of the Ark of the Covenant, only the sinless impurest of man can look into the Ark. And if you are not, you will die a very horrific death for some supernatural means, which is obviously what happens. And Ark, of course, gets um, locked up in some warehouse at the end of the film, which leads to future adventures of Indiana Jones due to the success of the film. Is I was growing up, now on to my opinion, real quick, is I was growing up, Raiders of the Lost Ark was one of my favorite movies. Now, keep in mind, I was a regular child. So when I grew up, I could watch movies like this. The world was different back then. Well, this brings to something I'm going to get straight pretty quickly right here. And I will bring up my little points before I finish my opinion. YouTube, there is... People's heads exploding into dust, or people's heads and entire bodies melting away 
into li into being liquidated. There's people being ripped up the shreds by repellers from large planes. Blood spattered coming out of people's heads. So, I really did not see how the Indiana Jones films, despite their PG and PG-13 ratings, except for in a small way, the newest movie, came with the Crystal Skull, is approved for children. So I did, do not approve this for children. Now, someone that is like, say, 14 years old could probably withstand the Dan Jones films realistically. But if parents are responsible, chances are you're not going to let your kids watch these movies due to the elaboracy of the films. Because despite the ratings, these films are very adult. So, I did not approve the reviews of these films for children. And we got that out of the way. We get more into my opinion of this much more with the next movie. But, what is the definitive Indiana Jones film is always a toss-up between Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom. And the reason why, to me, is they both have this unique balance of sci-fi fantasy, action, adventure, and horror suspense. Because these kind of are horror movies, science fiction movies, and fantasy adventure films all kind of at the same time. Alright, quality. We want to spend some good time on the quality. And we got some good time to talk about the quality. Um, it does contain this original 2.35.1 widescreen aspect ratio with the presentation of the movie, which I'm very happy about. The, um, the film is definitely drives far more towards um, HDR10, in my personal opinion. Although it does say Dolby Vision on the discs and stuff like that, I couldn't help but notice that um, black levels are popped a lot. There's um, vibrant detail when there is on color spectrums and stuff like that. So it is supposed to be preceded is a brand new Dolby Vision Intermediate 4K DI on all four, four of these movies. But I do see see that it could definitely be more HDR10 than the revision in terms of the picture. Uh, there are some scenes in this film to where it, well, first off, keep in mind that I am pretty much about 38 years old and um, this film is about three years older than I am. So this gives you a little idea how old this movie is. So, realistically, you can't clean every little thing in this movie. So there is, at certain points of the film, there is still out, very dated grain and a bit of, you know, distorted imagery due to it being on film stock in its original format. But this is quite literally the best that I have and probably anyone has ever seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. It probably was only this good when it came out in theaters in 1982, although the film was made in 81. Um, so yeah, the quality is very, very good in this one, in terms of video. Um, definitely recommend it. You can always see um, frame by frame um, com comparisons on YouTube. You see the high detail, and man, is there high detail, and seeing it theatrically definitely shows. Now let's talk about the audio. Um, Spirit Change, um, Shane at Spirit Change has kind of s said it himself, that um, the Dolby Atmos on the Indiana Jones films, except for King with the Crystal Skull, was very static. Now what does he actually mean by that? Well, I'll, um, I'll tell you what he means by that. The um, overhead effects are there, 
but they're kind of blended very very well into the stereos in the mono channels that um, and if you have them obviously surround and back surround channels it's all very well blended into those and um, only when you have atmospheric things going on in the film film like whether it be outdoor things like wind and stuff like that or or supernatural forces or whatever you know things that are very dramatic is only when the overhead effects really get a, a little bit of no, being noticed but even then they're not dramatic and I think that's the easiest way to kind of describe the Dolby Atmos in this film now is that bad no actually is not it's not bad at all um, the Dolby Atmos is still quite good in this movie but don't expect anything demo worthy or anything extraordinary out of it but keep in mind this movie was made in 1981 and released in 1982 so that should give you a little bit of an idea and I'll correct myself on age is about two years older than I am but that's still pretty old and that's kind of my point um, as for the still book I like the still book I think the design that Paramount did is not bad, but it's not great. And we'll get more into that when we're done with all this. And that's pretty much all there's to say about Raiders of the Lost Dark. Hope you enjoyed. And join me next for my review of Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Now, I know it's very interesting filming it like this, but um, I wanted to change things up a little bit. And I'll see you guys next time.